Hey, hidey ho, neighborino. It's Papa Spank, and we are finally out here with the Horizon Drive video. Now, this is going to be the first in a series of map analysis videos where I go through all the Treyarch Zombies maps, starting with my favorite and working my way to my least favorite, which just so happens to be Rise, and just go through them, do a map analysis, um, what the map means to me and the community, uh, bosses, weapons, you know, just things like that. And at the end of the video, I'm going to give it a blank out of 10 rating. Just like 13 year old girl Snapchat stories with their OMG, TBH, rate me, date me. Just the concept of that, but without that cringy e girlness. We are grown men on the Papa Spang channel. We are not like that. Now, without further ado, let's just jump into it. So, Rise and Draft was born February 2nd, 2016. And with that, it brought us some of the best gameplay, a really fun easter egg to complete, and just beautiful memories with friends that you can hold in your heart throughout your life. Now, Rising Draft doesn't start off strong. It's an easy map that you can just get into, and it's not overbearing right at the start. Any player can play it, whether that be speedrunners or just casual players. And it's not going to be a lot for anyone to handle. You just open doors, and go to the box, get power, and that's just, you can play like that. Or, you can go and do it a more complex way, like with the bows. Around the map, there are dragons, and if you kill a zombie under them, they will awaken and try to eat you. But not you, they want that zombie, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what I mean. But anyways, <laughs> just like the hounds on Mob of the Dead, if you feed them, they'll just leave, and you unlock um, the Wrath of the Ancients bow. And you can stop there if you want to, but if you want to keep going with a little bit of complexity, you can upgrade the Wrath of the Ancients bow. And there are four possibilities that you can go with, four routes you can take. You can either make the Void bow, the Lightning bow, the Fire bow, and my personal favorite bow, the Wolf bow. Each of these bows have their own unique setup or quest, and they're just not too hard to complete. And you have the fun of, if you're playing with friends, to organize who gets what bow. And once you get to Wrath the Ancients, just going off in your own paths and just setting up. It's fun, and a lot of people don't think setting up is fun. But personally, I like setting up stuff. It's just part of the process, and it's easy, and I flow with it. But another thing that's interesting about the bows is, for instance, the wolf bow. The wolf bow centers around the point of the Wolf King. To get the wolf bow, you have to go around the map and look at paintings, which tell the story of the Wolf King. His rise and fall, the Apothecan War, and sadly, his immediate death. And the fact that Treyarch really put the time and effort to put a storyline behind a wonder weapon just speaks to me, and I just find it interesting. And the rest of the bows are pretty unique. Like, if you want to camp, obviously, you're going to use the lightning bow. But, other than that, it's just fun to set up with friends. And you can just go, get your bow, and make it to any round you want. I promise you that. Unless you just suck. And you know what? We don't discriminate here in the zombies community. If you suck, you're still, you're still a proud member. But, with the bringing of new things, you gotta have some old things. And those old things are the mini-bosses. Now, if you played Origins, you know a thing or two about the Panzer Soldat. About round 12, he will fly in and he will either make or break your day. This prick will either grab you like Harvey Weinstein, freaking electrocute you, burn you, or just slap you. Or you can kill him, which is likely, but it's easier if you have a ray gun or you're at the electric trap where you can get a pack-a-punch piece, which is another great thing about this map, or traps. But I'll get into that later. Panzer, you know, you have to have a little boss like that on a map like this. It balances everything out and doesn't make it too easy. My only complaint about Panzer isn't that he pops up when you're just setting up and stuff. 
It's that he pops up when you're doing the Easter egg. Not just one, not two, not three, but like five Panzers when you're doing the boss fight. Imagine just five Panzers now. Like you s load up a game, you get some guns, five Panzers. Do you think you're gonna survive that? No. You're lucky enough to have a bow, thank God, but imagine just this five Panzers coming at you like the well, freaking African coffin, coffin dancers. It it's just intimidating and it's scary, if you ask me. But with the return of Panzer, we also see the return of Hellhounds. And I don't need to explain the Hellhounds, really. They're pretty iconic with zombies. You know, every five rounds or so, they spawn in, you put them down, and you get a max ammo. You know, simple as that. And it's helpful with bows, especially once you get them upgraded and their ammo goes from 60 to 75, and you can just spam them on that round and then get back to 75 bow ammo. It's pretty convenient, in my opinion, and it's just a nice touch. It's not like the spiders on sets or like the Valkyrie drones on Garod, but sometimes you need to hit close to home and feel familiar with zombies, and that's why the Hellhounds just make a great addition. Drizing Draft is just a mosh pit of new and old, and it blends together well in a nice zombies experience. And with that, like, you can replay this map over and over again. You can ask any zombie YouTuber, I've asked my friends on their opinion on this, Drizing Draft is just one of those maps you can come back and play over and over again. It's fun, you can set up in different ways, and generally with friends, which is more fun, it's just... And no, I'm not going to say easy. I mean, it's easy to get to a higher round on Rising Jack more than Garod, but it's just a good aesthetic to have with a zombies map. Now, with that being said, we need to talk about the map itself. Around the map is just a giant castle. It's the Wolf King's castle, which also ties in with the Wolf Bow. It's the Wolf King's castle. And with that... And just, it's a beautiful map. Has a giant mosh pit of colors: green, white, orange, blue, red. Very bright colors, which I'm not gonna say isn't normal on zombies. There's a variety of colors, but it just looks nice. It's pleasing to the eyes when it's like 3 a.m. and you don't want to play something like, I don't know, knocked and just deal with gray and make you tired. But at the same time. You don't want to do Grod Crovy and just have orange and red and burn your eyeballs out. It's a nice medium ground for those two maps. Fun to play, just simplicity's sake with colors. And travel's easy. You have the Wonder Sphere, which comes in hand handy when you're doing clutches and stuff. And I'm sure, like any Zombies player, you can walk. I think. I don't know. <laughs> Imagine just Richtofen just levitating. Yes, walking to places is the most common way to do things. Um, other than walking, training is fairly simple. You can train where the um, death ray is and be fine. That's where I normally train. Um, other than that, like in the room I'm at now, it's a little tricky to train because of the um, little poles there. But it's doable. It's fun too. This map will always hold a special place in my heart and my friend's heart it's a beautiful map and so many memories are made every day when we play this I know when I play this I can flow well I can feel like I'm on top of it all and I'm not gonna fail and combust like I would on Zets it's just simplicity wins here it just is a beautiful mosh pit of so many new things and old things and anyone can play this map. I didn't play when I was good, but here I am now playing it. It's just doable for anyone. And that's why, to me, it's the best map. And with that being said, guys, I really appreciate you lending your ears to me. And I really hope you guys took away something. Took something away from this video. Yeah, take the video away. Take away the video. No, but really, if I could English, I would. Thank you guys for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. And I will see you all somewhere. <laughs> Bye, guys.